Hi, welcome back to Oakwood House making and creating stuff. Um, usually I put up um, videos of wood turning as I just recently started doing wood turning um, but I'm having like uh, a couple of side projects going on and I just wanted to run some interesting projects by you as, as I do make them. Um, one of the things that we at Oakwood House like to do is like you know use some of the old-fashioned skills um, I know I use machinery for the wood turning but um, like uh, my partner sees into wool spinning so you know you get to you get to look at you know um, making stuff yourself uh, one of the things she was looking at now she got a spinning wheel gifted um, so that was a good start um, but as you spin quite a, a bit of wool, um, you're going to need a, uh, a carter, which is basically needed to get all the fibers of the wool going in one direction, making it easier to spin. Um, it's good when you're doing little batches, you can get a carding board and a carding brush to do that. But if you want to do more, you're going to be needing a, um, a drum carter. Right. So we have been shopping around for drum carters and the prices of them are just like enormous. Uh, it seems that as soon as something is considered an artistic hobby, they slap the price tags on them. Um, so I set about uh, looking for plans to build uh, a drum carter myself. Um, I did acquire some and I have to say I only used the plans to have like a rough impression on you know how a drum carter works and what it should do and what it shouldn't do. Um, the second part is like I've decided to build a prototype so uh, I basically uh, grabbed some uh, construction grade wood and uh, three by fours mostly and started to bang something together which I would hope would be a prototype for a uh, drum carter. So going simple and straight and, and quick um, I kind of like came up with a, with a design which rests on a frame like this and as you can see this this is not a very special it is a couple of two by fours okay I pretty them up a little bit with a router giving them you know that Roman bevel edge um, but really didn't do much there um, some pen connections um, uh, in forced wood brackets and then probably the most work was on the rest for the main drum, the big drum, um, that I routed out a slot so I could move the position of the drum. Um, and that was basically it. So um, we're going to go through the process of actually assembling everything back together because I had it together before, uh, but it was like really rough nothing was sanded and I just wanted to make sure that I had you know uh, a working model so I took it took it apart and um, we're actually going to go through the process of putting everything uh, back together again there are some extra little things that I've done that you might find handy not even if you're going to make a drum carter but any other type of project that you might go like hey well you know that's a pretty good idea uh, I did some wood turning on this um, uh, mostly making the legs um, which I have here and um, you see the black yucky stuck on it is actually um, black silicon kit uh, basically I apply the layer on it so when it's resting on a flat surface it's not going to slip around too much so uh, you know that's that's a good little hint if you're you know going to make a table or something that has to rest on a flat surface which gets quite a bit of force applied to it <coughs> so the first thing I've got to do, I've, I've gave it a bit of sanding, it's like, you know, it's still pretty rough, but um, I mean the next one I would make, I would like get some oak, get some real nice wood and put some more time into it. Um, the prototype um, basically was banged together, roughly sketched out and uh, build up as, as we go along. Uh, now what I want to do is to preserve this wood. Um, because it's not oak, it's not nothing special, it's quite soft. Uh, I'm going to give it a uh, treatment with uh, linseed oil um, just to keep it in condition and um, um, to keep the moisture out and or, and or to keep it from drying out too much. So we're going to start with that. 
instead of varnishing it, I'm giving this a little coat with linseed oil. That should preserve the wood. And also what linseed oil does, it uh, crystallizes inside the wood and makes it kind of a, an impregnable barrier. Now linseed oil usually gets into the wood pretty quickly. So I could leave it there for just a couple of minutes. And then just take the excess off. And I think I'm just going to leave it. So like the frame has been sitting in a thick application of linseed oil for about half an hour. And now I'm just rubbing it up with a paper towel just to remove the excess so it won't be all slippery. Uh, it also helps to work it in. going to use these used paper towels just to give some love to the workbench. Just have to keep my stuff together here. Right. So I'm ready to start building it up. I've gotten the legs screwed on and um, the silicone is going to stop it from sliding too much if it's on a smooth surface. So it's now time to actually um, put the pieces back into place. But the first thing we're going to set in is the large drum. Right, I've got a handle on this side and the drum goes in here. And it's going to rest on these pieces. And here. I know roughly how to put them in. Um, just going to use nuts and washers to set them down. There we go. First one goes in. I'm not tightening it fully yet. I'm going to wait till that's until um, I put the smaller drum in. Just getting this one in. Just turn it a bit so I can get underneath the handle. I'll show you the handle up close a little bit later. Um, it's just a lot of the stuff that you'll see on this um, drum carter is basically stuff that I had lying about. I'm one of those people that hates to throw stuff away. And my partner does give out about that, but especially with projects like this, you're going like, hey, I need a handle. Don't I have like a piece of washing dryer somewhere? Make a handle out of it. I'm gonna make myself life easy by just turning it around. And you're not missing out on anything special, it's just me putting in screws and tightening them. Whoop. Now the drum you see, it's it's not a rocket science thing to make. It's basically a 
threaded bar that goes through a drum that I made. Actually, I've got a picture somewhere. I might add that into the video just to show you. How it was actually made, but basically the wheels, the side wheels are made using a router, putting it on the table and creating a jig so I could have the circumference of the wheel and just moving the wood around so I had a perfect circle somewhat-ish. <laughs> then we put the small drum in place which is easier which is, has a static position and I just need to put it back where it was, if I can. Got it? Okay. Time to drive these babies home. Yep. Okay, that looks good. And you can see I had in a, a test code some bits of wool sticking on there. I just wanted to see. Yeah. And that's why I have the little alignment things on there. Knock it a little bit back. This side needs to go a little back. Maybe I've tightened this too much already. It's a little smart. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to tighten these. Now we okay, final inspection. 
Yes, that is lovely gripping into each other as it should be. Now, the way it's supposed to go is as this round wheel should do four rotations for every rotation this wheel does. So what you get is like, you get this combing action but this one is going slowly around as well. And that is how basically the carding takes place. I don't know if you can see it there but it's actually picking up some of the wool that was on the wheel and pulling it out and that's basically what a carder does. It just pulls it out. So, now you can see that I kind of build it in a way that is as a wheel here that's four times the diameter of this one. So as you probably guessed there's going to be a mechanism between these two, right? Now, to make it interesting, right, these wheels, basically, this one, they're going in the same way, right? So if we would have like just a um, what do you call it? A um, a belt? It would not work. It would defeat its purpose. So what we actually need is a system that can convey that. As it so happens, I've created such a system, and again. This is all stuff that I had lying around and probably like I said before the next one I'm going to make is going to be more crafty and more nice and ooh and ah and probably make this contraption entirely out of wood. But this is what I came up with. So I'm basically this goes here, right? This one goes over this yoke. Oh. I'll be better just put it in together so you can actually see what I mean here. So and you notice like this is like kind of like a strange afterthought thing that happened. Well that was because I kind of like miscalculated my rig in the angle that it should work the best. So I had to cheat a little bit, but thank God I had a, a lot of crap material to make this contraption. So I'm going to put that first in place and then everything shall be revealed my friend. Okay. So I say I put lots of washes on this. Sometimes like when I build something, like I put in extra screws and extra washer in them, and I take it apart, and then it's time for reassembly, and I'm going like, why did I do that? So, just keep in mind what it's about. Okay, so that's a washer, that's a lock washer, and that's a teeny weeny little nut. So we'll be so lucky if it is all well, eight mils. Okay. That is in place, nice and tight. Now we have this big securing screw. So it wouldn't be tempted to tilt. And that's in place. Okay. So probably now I can explain why I made this mad contraption. Okay. 
So this, let me see, this goes here, that goes there, that goes there. Okay. Teach a bit of a guiding. Oh, we can get it on. Now, this is the way it goes. I turn the handle, and as you see, as you see, nothing happens because I don't have this on properly. Once it's on there, it's okay. There we go. Now it's on properly. As I turn this wheel, you see that both wheels are kind of like turning against each other. some challenges here because usually you need to use a polypropylene lean or something belt right the reason that it's like kind of rubbery and can you know, like put on tension um, and I didn't really want to go that way I wanted to go with a leather belt um, and I'm just going to turn it and as you can see I got some buffalo hide and I knitted it together with some steel wire and it does exactly the purpose right and though it doesn't have no elastic uh, capabilities my little contraption does here so it keeps tension on right all with the help of a little piece of spare inner tire so that's another thing if you're looking for something uh, solution to your problem uh, basically everything you need is around you if you're a hoarder just like me so I'm just going to turn this around so it faces me I'm going to give it a spin to see if it needs some final adjustments oh, there's a, quite a bit of oil there Didn't wipe that part. Oh, now I have. So. It's kind of jammy there. And I think I know why. I need to align one of my rolls to one side or the other. So. And that's a problem. So that means I'm going to lose the front one because they are the easiest to loosen up. Now it's going to okay that is loose. That is loose. That is loose. So I'm going to make an adjustment to the side aligning. I think I've got it now.
I'm just going to tighten it up one screw on both sides. Okay. And it goes much smoother now. Okay. I'm just going to see. This buddy on there. There we go. Now get this one on there. There we go. That's a working uh, drum powder for you. I have to remember which way was which. It was this way. And that's it. So I hope you learned something from this video. Um, I know it's not really enough to let you build your own drum card or straight from the go from watching this video. You, you know, it's I recommend to get some plans. Um, it doesn't mean you have to follow the plan literally. Um, another tip I have is like if you're going to, you know, build something that you know you're unfamiliar with, especially something mechanical. Um, build a prototype, you know, use cheap materials. The most expensive thing on this drum carder is the carding cloth. So there's, uh, there's 100 euros on carding cloth in here. Um, everything else, I would say it's be beneath uh, 20 euros on materials spent on, uh, on this carder. Um, what it has enabled me to say um, okay the next time I'm going to be smarter about some things like the tensioning system I'm not really happy with that but it, it, it's, it will suffice um, also I'm going to make that tension system out of wood uh, also the use of a rubber band um, from uh, the inner tube of a bicycle is something that I'm going to conti continue to use as a, uh, as a resource so, uh, so thank you for joining and um, maybe next time I will show you a very nifty crafted drum carder. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye bye.